welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. I've always felt there was something deeper to reality, beyond what can be characterized by the five senses. If you think about it, even the most high-tech, finely tuned scientific instruments are just extensions of our basic five senses. Seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, all necessary for successful evolution on planet Earth. That doesn't mean there aren't other types of observables, other forms of information, other sides of reality, or maybe other realities entirely. Aldous Huxley in The Doors of Perception described the mind as a filter that hides all the non-survival critical information. So basically, consciousness is only getting the basic cable subscription package with only half the channels. That way, we don't get too distracted by all the strange alternate landscapes and disembodied entities forget to tend to our basic needs and get eaten by hyenas or fall off cliffs while staring off in another galaxy on the other side of a membrane. Huxley believed our five senses are capable of much more, but we've been limited to a narrow spectrum of sensory information. Maybe the obvious reality is just a subset of something much more complex. For as long as I can remember, I've felt something more was going on. I've felt it the way a planet feels gravity. And I'm definitely not the only one. Throughout history and in modern times, there have been and are those searching for ways to access what's currently beyond our reach. Searchers across all disciplines looking for a bridge, a window, or a door to the other side. There are some doors you can't just casually saunter through. The passageways to transformation to empowerment, enlightenment, are hidden, not at all obvious, often locked to anyone without study, dedication, courage, and tenacity. Some doors are false, others are traps. Some portals are dangerous to cross. These doors that separate this outer inner space can come in surprising forms. Aldous Huxley's door was a bit of a very special cactus he consumed before kicking back in an easy chair. This short, stubby succulent contained an alkaloid chemical called mescaline. Huxley's other book, Brave New World, features a drug called Soma that's actually a false door. Soma intoxicates. It can engender hallucinations and ecstasy, but offers no real intellectual or psychological insight of any kind. Soma just keeps the rich kids in Brave New World partying, but never really takes them anywhere. What's interesting is Huxley based Soma in the book off of actual historical evidence of a complex plant potion that granted those who consumed it supernatural insights and powers and allowed them glimpses of visions beyond reality. Soma, like the Shankara stones in Indiana Jones, may have been based on something real. Soma was the ritual drink of the ancient Vedic tradition, and there is a lot of historical evidence to suggest the widespread use of this powerful hallucinogen. There have been decades of intense speculation about the identity of the original key plant in the Soma potion. For years, the secret of Soma was the topic of hot debate among ethnopharmacologists and botanists. One of the most important and prominent theories came from a man named R. Gordon Wasson in 1968. Wasson is an interesting case. He wasn't your typical scientist or anyone you would expect to spearhead important research into these sort of topics. R. Gordon Wasson is the same man who wrote the famous Life magazine article introducing the American public to psychedelic psilocybin mushrooms. He was also a known CIA agent who may have been working on the agency's behalf to introduce the psychedelic movement to the United States public. I know this sounds crazy, but there is a lot of evidence to support this. Wasson wasn't the only one in the hippie movement who was secretly working for the feds. It makes for a very interesting story, and it's hard to tell exactly where people like Wasson stood at such an important part of history. Nevertheless, 
R. Gordon Waston was fascinated with mind-altering plant chemicals as potential gateways to new insights and revelations. He was the one who studied the ancient Vedic manuscripts in a mission to identify the ingredients in Soma. His data came mainly from an analysis of the holy Vedic books, which described the preparation of the magic potion. He came to the conclusion Soma was based on a fungus, an odd kind of mushroom, one rather distinct from the usual varieties. Wasson proposed it was the psychoactive fly agaric mushroom, otherwise known as the Amanita muscaria. The most iconic of the toadstool species, Amanita muscaria is a large, white-gilled, red mushroom with bright, white spots. It's one of the most recognizable and widely encountered in popular culture. This includes video games, such as the extensive use of a recognizable Amanita muscaria in the Super Mario franchise, in the form of its mushroom power-up. This mushroom looks more like something you would see in a video game or cartoon, rather than on a wooded path in the middle of Russia. Although classified as poisonous, reports of human deaths resulting from Amanita muscaria are extremely rare. They're actually eaten for food in parts of Europe, Asia, and North America, typically after two rounds of boiling and draining the water. This weakens the toxicity and breaks down the mushroom's psychoactive chemicals. Hallucinogenic neurotoxins, ibotenic acid, and muscimol. Ibotenic acid is an agonist, or activator, of glutamate receptors in multiple systems in the central nervous system. These receptors are related to synaptic plasticity and work to establish what's called long-term potentiation. This process of long-term potentiation, or hyperactivation, is believed to be related to the acquisition of new information, learning, and memory. Under the influence of this drug, the nerves are pushed to the max with toxic effects. Ibotenic acid is broken down in the body and the carboxylic acid group is removed. The resulting molecule, muscimol, is actually another, even more potent drug acting on the central nervous system in a similar way. From one drug comes another. A local variety of the Amanita muscaria mushroom was used as an intoxicant and ethnogen by the indigenous peoples of Siberia and by the Sami and it still has religious significance in these cultures. There has been considerable speculation on possible traditional use of this mushroom as an intoxicant in other places, such as the Middle East, Eurasia, North America, and Scandinavia. However, in the last few hundred years, use of Amanitas for divine purposes has effectively disappeared. It's as though the mushroom stopped working or someone lost the recipe for how to prepare them. These fungi are mostly legal and uncontrolled throughout the world. If Amanita muscaria is the main mystical ingredient in Soma, if Amanitas really are magic, then why haven't they caught on? Why aren't they outlawed and only available on shady street corners? The reason is, is that people can't decide if Amanitas are magic, bunk, or just plain poison. Amanita muscaria mushrooms are known for the unpredictability of their effects. Depending on habitat and the amount ingested, effects can range from mild nausea and twitching to drowsiness, cholinergic, crisis-like effects, which include low blood pressure, sweating, and salivation, auditory and visual distortions, mood changes, euphoria, relaxation, ataxia, and loss of equilibrium. That's a lot of effects. This wide range of psychoactive effects have been variously described as depressant, sedative hypnotic, psychedelic, dissociative, and deliriant. Also, paradoxical effects such as stimulation may occur with ingestion of Amanita muscaria, and perceptual phenomena such as synesthesia, which is a blending of sensory information. For instance, sight and smell can be experienced as one single sense. Alice in Wonderland syndrome, where objects in the world take on tiny and massive distorted proportions, has also been noted. Some users report lucid dreaming under the influence of the mushroom's hypnotic element. Curiously, some don't experience any effect at all. Others 
just suffer from short bouts of the sweats and the shits. In his book, Food of the Gods, ethnobotanist and hero of the Vanadium show, Terence McKenna, claims the most likely candidate for Soma is a different mushroom, Psilocybe cubensis, a more conventional hallucinogenic mushroom that grows in cow dung in certain climates. The world is much more familiar with this particular fungus. McKenna cites as evidence both R. Gordon Wasson's and his own unsuccessful attempts using Amanita muscaria to reach a psychedelic state. He and Wasson just couldn't make Amanitas work, so they just couldn't be Soma. Or maybe McKenna and Wasson overlooked something. Maybe there is a special step or an as yet unidentified ingredient. I think of ayahuasca, which is an ancient hallucinogenic brew made from two separate plants. Either ingredient won't work on its own. Both plants need to be consumed together to feel the effects. There are some reports suggesting Amanita muscaria needs to be consumed by a large herbivore, like a reindeer, before the animal's urine is then ingested. It's hard to know if that's true without doing the experiment, which the Vanadium Show is not recommending. Maybe one day science will discover the secret of Soma. Perhaps down the road, new sensory doors will be opened. New insights will be gained, and our understanding revolutionized. Once that happens, the world will never look the same again. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.